afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Lei Zhang. Uh, I'm a software engineer working for Intel Open Source the Technical Center and uh, focus on GPU virtualization. Uh, this is today's agenda. Uh, in today's session, we would like to talk about the live migration design of MIDI device and also give an update on Intel vGPU live migration implementation. Uh, as we all know, the uh, MIDI device is a new feature introduced in VFIO for efficient I.O. sharing in virtualization environment since last year. Uh, for example, we have enabled it for uh, GPU, network adapter, and other computing accelerators. Uh, but however, MIDI device doesn't support live migration today, uh, which is a key gap in data center and uh, cloud usage. Uh, so in this talk, we will introduce the challenges and the gaps about uh, how to live, mi live migrate MIDI device and as they elaborate the techniques by extending VFL uh, media device framework to bridge the gaps. Uh, Intel has finished the prototype to enable the migration on Intel GVTG, which is also known as the KVM GT for the GPU virtualization. Uh, so for the migration of media device, uh, there are four kinds of status we hope to take care of. Uh, the first is the emulated virtual MMIO status, and the second one is the hardware status on the MIDI device, uh, such as graphics, memories, and the page tables, or pending working queues. And the third is the uh, pending interrupts on the MIDI, MIDI device. Uh, the last one is the dirty memory pages, uh, which is accessed by MIDI device through DMA. So in general migration flow, uh, after migration start, it will start copy the entire guest memory to the target at the first, and then it will do the iterative uh, memory copy. So uh, after that, after the VM stopped, uh, it will do the static copy and the also migrate the device status. So a common virtual device could put its status in the fields of VM state. So QMU will copy this state uh, to the target VM through the VM state save interface. And on the target VM side, uh, it can store this information through VM state load interface before resume the VM. However, on MIDI device, uh, lots of the resource has been passed through. So QMU don't have this stuff which have to extend the framework of VFIO and dev to get them. Uh, as the picture shows, so for the migration of MIDI device, we need to consider three more steps. The first is to about how to retrieve and the restore the MIDI device status, uh, contact status. And the second one is control the running status of the MIDI device to stop and resume. And the last one is the dirty memory pages. Um, by leveraging the VFI, uh, VFI framework, we decided to use a new VFI region to do the media device context transmission. We will register a new VFI region named the VFI region subtype device status, uh, which will be initialized during the uh, initial of the media device driver. Uh, so QMU will be able to enable the line migration if it detects the media device and support this subregion. And uh, so during the migration, QMU would be easy to access uh, these uh, subregions through the device FD to retrieve and uh, restore the device contacts. And also, we would like to use the same region to control the running status of the MIDI device. So uh, we would like to use the beginning of this region as the uh, device state control field. So if QMU write the device stop command to it, the vendor driver would be able to stop the media device and uh, remove it from the scheduler. So it can be, so, uh, it can be migrated later. And vice versa, on the target VM side, it, QMU would write the device start command to this field 
to adapt, adapt the device back to the scheduler and uh, kick off the execution uh, after the VM resume. Uh, as part of the device resume process, uh, one important thing is to reconstruct the PCI configuration region. On the source VM side, uh, this configuration is uh, uh, initialized by guest itself during its uh, boot up. Uh, but on the target VM side, QMU have to go through the same PCI configuration uh, region to reconstruct the device, the immediate device resource mapping and uh, rebuild the virtual interrupt injection path uh, so that the media device driver would be able to inject the virtual interrupt into guest through event FD after the target VM resumed. Uh, the last one is uh, talking about the dirty memory pages. How do we handle the dirty memory pages? Uh, so far, we know there are two paths to do it. Uh, one is let the vendor driver to report the dirty bitmap to QMU, and uh, the other way is to query the memory mapping from the VFIO IOMMU driver to uh, build a dirty bitmap as well. Uh, this is, uh, as we know that in mediated device driver, uh, it will create the shadow page table uh, for the, its DMA access. So when the driver could track these guest friend numbers and use them to build the dirty bitmap for QMU to transfer the dirty the memory pages uh, during the migration. And the, on the other hand, uh, the other way is the, in the VFIO framework, the vendor driver will ping the memory in runtime through the VFIO IOMMU driver. So this mapping is also tracked by VFIO IOMMU driver. Uh, during the migration, QMU could also query this mapping from VFIO IOMMU driver and build up the dirty bit map for QMU to transfer this memory used by mediated device. Uh, and this is the migration policy for Intel vGPU resources. Uh, the first one is the virtual MMO register. Uh, we just uh, copy and restore the entire MMO region uh, through the subregion, the VFL, the new VFL subregion. And the second part is about the, the virtual interrupt uh, in vGPU. So uh, on the target VM side, we were able to inject the pending interrupt after uh, the VM resume. Uh, the third part is the uh, graphic DMA memory. Uh, uh, just as we mentioned in the last slides, we would like to use the uh, second way, like the, uh, let the QMU to query the P2M mapping uh, from the IOMM driver and the transfer them during the migration. The last part is the uh, GPU context, like the render engine context and uh, uh, the page, uh, graphic page tables. So this part we will recreate a shadowing in the, on the target VM side uh, after VM resume. Uh, this is the uh, current uh, vGPU live migration flow. So on the VM side, uh, source VM side, uh, uh, during the migration after vCPU stops, uh, the QMU will write uh, the device stop command to the new authorizing uh, device status field to stop the vGPU and remove it and let the uh, device driver remove it from the scheduler. And then the QMU would query the dirty bit map uh, from the IOMMU driver and the write the dirty map to the QMU dirty list for memory synchronization. At the last, uh, it will the QMU will retrieve the vGPU uh, MemMMO or other contacts from the subregion and uh, copy it through the QMU file or TCP IP and other protocol. So on the target VM side, after receiving this information, uh, it will at first reconstruct the vGPU PCI configuration space 
uh, to rebuild the uh, resource mapping and uh, set up the virtual interrupt injection parts. And the second, it will restore the uh, MMIO and other contacts through the subregion by writing this information uh, to the uh, vendor driver. And then after the VGPU resume, the QMU will write the device start command uh, to the device state field in the subregion. Then the device driver will be able to put the VGPU into scheduler and kick off the execution. Then the VGPU will be able to resume uh, after the migration. Uh, this is the current status of our VGPU uh, live migration implementation. So Intel has finished the experimental uh, VGPU migration support for both KVM and uh, Zen. Currently, we on the hardware platform, we support Intel 6th and 7th generation core processors. And we also test several benchmarks. For the Windows guest, we have tested the Heaven, 3D Mark, Tropic, and the Media Decoder Encoder workload. Uh, on the Linux VM, we also test with 3D like uh, LiceMark, or the 2D benchmarkers, and the other media, media, media workloads. And uh, we also bring a demo video about the Intel VGPU live migration with 3D workload. Uh, this is the hardware setup, so we have two Intel uh, sixth generation core processor platform uh, set up together. We create the v guest VM with two v CPUs uh, and the, it has two giga system memory and 512 megabyte graphics memory. Uh, the physical machine will connect together with uh, through 10 giga BPS network adapter. And uh, after measuring the Migration, the service downtime is less than five milliseconds, uh, 500 milliseconds, and the total migration time is about uh, two and a half to three seconds. Okay, this is the video for the live migration on the Intel vGPU. So we use a wind time guest, which is running also running the Tropic on it. It will migration from the machine A to machine B and uh, vice versa for several times. And that's all. And uh, last, we would like to talk about the uh, future works. The RFC for the VGPU line migration has been sent out. Then we try to up upstream the current implementation for the VGPU migration. And the, also, we want to leverage the current work to support the pass-through or SROV device migration later. Uh, this is the link to our project website. Uh, you can scan the two dimension, uh, dimensional code to get access to our website. I think uh, uh, that's all for my presentation. Is that a question? Yeah. So you mentioned a 30 bit map on the island of you. Yeah. Uh, I thought the IMU would just give you the list of pages that had been mapped to the device, not necessarily those that were currently dirty. Uh, I think it's just, uh, uh, it's, but it's used for the GPU, the, I think it's used for the GPU DMA access, right? So yeah. we think this memory is dirtied by the GPU, so we have to copy it to the target uh, VM. So you're copying all pages that have been mapped to the GPU, is that correct? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But that's with MDEV devices. That's a fairly small set of ten pages, so that they can they can track track a subset of the total VMF. At, at runtime, are they is that set static? No. Okay. It changes. <coughs> Solutions you have two ways. One is to report 30 pages, uh, report 30 pages yourself, mm -hmm. and other ways uh, to query the uh, query the IOMU, right? So, yeah. but then I think the second solution might not work because when you have uh, another pass through device inside the VM, because it, that will make all the memory get pinned. Mm, right? You mean we have another pass through device in the VM. Yes. So I think in this case we cannot do the migration, right? So except we have some metadata driver for this pass through device. So if and if these two devices are in the same mm -hmm. uh, our MU memory group, so they will also use this. Maybe also use this pin message uh, method to pin the DMA buffers, so we all can copy right. these buffers to the target VM as well. Another thing, another question is uh, when you said uh, you have 500, that's, that's the experiment you did is a 500 megabyte of uh, uh, frame buffer, right? So you that. Mean, which, uh, which part? Yeah, it's 512 megabyte. Uh, yeah, 512 <laughs> megabyte of uh, the graphics memory. That's, I assume that entire 512 megabyte of uh, graphic memory will be marked as dirty when you do the stop and copy, right? That's felt, that is uh, you copied through the stop copy phase. Uh, you mean we so will copy the 520 megabytes? Yeah. Uh, the stop think, yeah, it depends on the workload. I think we may not be uh, may not need to copy the entire graphics memory, right? Okay. We just uh, copy the memory that uh, the GPU workload is using. Okay. So you have uh, internally you have you you know which part of the frame buffer is pinned or not pinned, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you. Do you know, um, ha have you tried doing it iteratively? So I, I think you're saying here at the end, you set the bitmap um, and then uh, transfer the pages as a dirty. Have you tried integrating it into the iterative mechanism so that you transfer most of the pages before you stop? The so, processor. So you you are talking about the iterative copy, right? For the also use yeah. the inter, iterative copy logic for the graphics memory, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's uh, I think we are trying some method for that, uh, because currently we do not have the 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 right pro pro protect for the DMA pages, so we may not use the uh, common way to write protect the memory and do the iterative copy, so we have some alt alternative way to do so. So since this patch is still under testing, so it, it definitely will short the system downtime. Yeah. Uh, not yet. So far, not yet. <laughs> so, thank you.